Now the procedure will be, I will, I mean one of you will come forward to speak, then one of you will give a topic. Right? <coughs> All right, now, anybody who has volunteer to to speak? Anybody? Molly? So Molly, as a small mortgage, she can assign the she comes to her mind. Anyone might suggest a topic? Any topic? A topic. Finance. Sorry, loud. Finance. Finance. Finances are a very, very important matter, I think, for anybody to consider, regardless of their age, if you're young or if you're older. Now, if you're younger and you have many, many years ahead of you, you want to consider a number of different things. First of all, do you have any debt that you need to repay from your schooling? If that is the case, make a plan to repay that debt and then consider perhaps purchasing a house. Um, start planning early on how you are going to get ready for your retirement so that you might enjoy your retirement when you get there so you can come to a beautiful place like this, stay in a beautiful resort like this, and take a beautiful kayak trip much like I took today. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you're my age, maybe you haven't started planning for your future yet, it's probably a very, very good time to start thinking about your finances. So then we want to consider how you might save your money a little bit more aggressively. Um, if you don't own a home yet, it might be a very good time to start thinking about doing that. Good time to find a financial planner. Uh, I would definitely do that. And um, they'll help you figure out how you can set your finances up so that when you get to your retirement, you can enjoy it in the best way possible. Now, if you're a little bit older, say you're in your 60s, your 70s, and you haven't really planned anything, <laughs> that's a really, really tricky situation. Um, find a very, very good financial planner. Buy some lottery tickets. <laughs> Practice Qigong and ask the cosmos to help you find a comfortable solution for your retirement very, very fast. Better yet, if you have children, actually at any stage of the game, if you're younger, if you're my age, if you're younger than my age, or even if you're a little bit older than my age, have some children. Get married, have a family, have children, so that when you get older, they can support you and take care of you. Very good. Thank you. Even though we are at the first stage, She's already at the third or fourth stage already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will go to the other stage later on. Huh? Now, the important is you flow very well. And that's what Molly did. Huh? Uh, uh, the talk will be about five minutes. So five minutes. And, and she also fulfilled that requirement. Huh? All right, another warranty? You want to try out? Yes. Rika? And anybody want to suggest a topic? Sea turtles. <laughs> sea turtles. Sea turtles. Like the sea turtles, like the turtles that swim in the Ah, yeah, the turtles. <laughs> turtles. Yeah. Sure. Well, it's quite funny that you mentioned about sea turtles because uh, actually just the other day, uh, my group and I, uh, let's see, who was it? Uh, it was a lovely group here. Uh, we went and uh, took a trip to the beach down south, and uh, we, there we were just walking down the beach and enjoying a nice walk and thinking, oh, should we have a swim or uh, what should we do? And, uh, and we're walking by and just up on the shore comes a sea turtle. Aww. And uh, there it's just sitting there relaxing, enjoying a nice time, uh, maybe taking a nap, I don't know. <laughs> And uh, some people gather around and everybody's looking at it. And it, looks, it looks very peaceful. We look to the left, there's some other sea turtles swimming around in the water, like congregating. There's about two or three of them. Beautiful, beautiful sights. Had a wonderful time. And uh, I look at it and I thought, oh, I want to take a picture. And so I took a picture and I noticed it left. And I was like, oh, oh, maybe it, maybe it didn't want me to take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, 
so I had a lovely time uh, enjoying the beautiful sea turtles and uh, thank you so much for you know mentioning this topic it's, it's uh, so much fun to talk about with you guys and I hope that while you're here in your stay that you also might have a chance to see a, a beautiful sea turtle or some other wonderful amazing uh, nature while you're here all right thank you very much so so far our Zen training is providing very good results. <laughs> Mori and Erica, they just speak on the spot. Not only they flow, obviously, yeah, I think sea turtles are very important. Don't you agree? <laughs> yeah, stop for a while. The idea coming. Yeah? It's a matter when you agree or not, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Another, that is, that is one, I'll just say it's important. Or sea turtles, we may not see turtles every day, every day, but it may influence our life. Can you think of what ways the sea turtles can influence your life? That is possible. What? I think. Huh? It doesn't matter how, huh? for you buy time. Huh? Or talk about finance. What if you find yourself without money? What are you going to do? Then the, the people will think about it, and then you have time eh, to, to buy time, you think. Eh? Later on, you may you like, you can answer a question. I will. I'm going to tell you what you are going to do. Now when the ideas come to you. Then, the, the, actually, not only you buy time, but you add more interest eh, to the talk. The, the, the audio will listen to you. Wow, this, what is it? What is it? Eh? You will be in anticipation of what you're going to say. But these are some of the techniques you can do. Throw your question to the audience. Pause for a short. Because you are going to speak more than five minutes. Huh? Pause for a short while. About five seconds or ten seconds. Huh? You can look at them. You can pause that. Huh? Be alive. You look at them. But what, what, what do you do when you... So, so I purposely slow down. Huh? The first slow down so that I have time to gain. What would you do when you don't have any money. How <laughs> to look around. <laughs> that idea come. Yes. We are going to find out what we can do. In fact, <laughs> if you want to be happy, there are many ways to be happy without money. But that, that doesn't mean that we, we, uh, money is not useful. It is very useful. Yeah? You will make life comfortable. Then you continue when the ideas come. Yeah? The ideas that came to me, then I continue. Yeah? Alright, so there's one trick we can use. If you are stuck, then yeah, you are stuck. If you are not, like it's now, just carry on. Yeah? So if you're Japanese, uh, or, or you can speak in Japanese, or speak in uh, uh, Spanish, yeah? then you let the speech continue. So we just enjoy the music, or in the center of mind, try to pick up what the speaker is trying to say, if you can. Yeah? Then we compare with uh, the translation by Amico or by Peru. Yeah, maybe we have a Japanese now. Mm -hmm. uh, the lovely Japanese ladies, yes. Yeah. So I, I don't want, so, okay, Yumi or Naoko? Okay, Yumi, Yumi. Any, any, any topic? Uh, so Yumi is going to speak in Japanese. <laughs> Yumi can speak English very well, huh? but she's going to speak in Japanese. Yeah. Ready? Sorry? I have a topic. Yeah. Yes. You want a topic? Yes. How about uh, Aloha shirts? Aloha? Aloha, Aloha shirts. Shirt. Ah, Aloha shirts! Oh yes. my god! Yeah, you speak in Japanese <laughs> or in English? <laughs> Up to you. So you just say, oh my god! <laughs> that would be good. Wow, that's a very interesting topic! <laughs> so let's say, let's say I know nothing about Aloha shirt. Huh? It's a very interesting topic, <laughs> and we have an example there. Beautiful Aloha shirt. <laughs> then I say you want to buy time. Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Have a look at our handsome man. Mm -hmm. Then you have time. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to know. So if. Uh, anyone else 
who had uh, aloha shirts before? <laughs> so could you write uh, your hand if you have uh, wear the uh, aloha shirt? Wow, oh, so many people. <laughs> landscape so I'm very touched the helicopter uh, 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 how can I say driver 20 or 25 percent at the, at the run uh, people are living and uh, so it means uh, about more than uh, 75 percent of the land uh, so it's a uh, nature so there is uh, so many so many uh, uh, beautiful uh, waterfalls uh, in the island, and uh, so many different colors and, uh, uh, there uh, that I can see. So it's a beautiful. And uh, now I think about the uh, aloha shirts. So it's uh, all color contained uh, in aloha shirts. So it's a beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> And so I hope you can buy it and bring it to your place and so, so that you can uh, remember the beauty of Hawaii uh, in your house. And it's what I thought. Thank you. Another, another uh, speaker. Maybe we have a Spanish speaker. Yeah, any one of you? Yeah, you can speak in Spanish first. Huh? The rural was considered. No, after after the set finish, so that the idea will just flow. Huh? Any topic? Dogs. 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 Yeah. yeah. Perros. 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 <laughs> Perros. <laughs> Eh, se me hace muy buenos compañeros del hombre. Eh, curiosamente he investigado mucho sobre los perros y sé que los perros acompañan al ser humano desde tiempos muy, muy, muy ancestrales. De hecho, hay por ahí un video en YouTube que vi de unos chimpancés que se roban cachorros para tener perros de compañía. Y también he leído a etólogos que dicen que eh, mucho del comportamiento humano este, está como inspirado en, en la compañía con los perros. Este, al ser seres sociales puede haber como una cooperación muy interesante entre humanos y, y perros, así como los hay entre otros seres, ¿no? Por ejemplo, hay un caso particular en Brasil de unos delfines que cooperan con unos con los pescadores para pescar y comerse los peces, ¿no? se los reparten. Es algo muy raro porque los delfines salvajes se dejan atrapar por las redes y cosa que un animal salvaje difícilmente puede hacer y luego se reparten la mitad de los peces entre delfines y, y, y humanos. Eh, me viene a la mente también que los delfines se dice que antiguamente eran perros o un tipo de lobo que se metió al mar y se hizo acuático. Entonces tal vez por ahí venga la relación. Yo creo que ya Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 
memorizing what Paz said. <laughs> uh, she said um, she liked dogs a, a lot because they are very nice partners uh, with humans. And um, uh, then she recall uh, there is a cooperation between humans and dogs. And, and this has been happening in the world for many, many years. And she actually had made some research on the subject before. Uh, she <laughs> recalls a story, or actually uh, something that happens between dolphins and humans in some part of the world that honestly I don't remember, but, that they cooperate in, in some uh, similar way. There is a cooperation in a similar way between dolphins and humans in the same way that dogs and humans does. And uh, they go fishing and then they share the fishes between humans. And uh, and uh, apparently dolphins in the ancient times were some kind of dog or wolf that get uh, inside the sea and they became dolphins. I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. Wow. So the translation is also in a Zen mind, yeah? it's also smooth the translation. Yeah? Because when you are Zen mind, whether you are doing physical activity, so if you need, you can use that technique or tactics. If not, you just carry on. Yeah? So we'll continue with a few more examples. Uh, a few more uh, speakers, anybody? Uh, speak? <coughs> Very good, I mean, the topic, think about something far-fetched, yeah? Something far-fetched. Spacious. 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 Spaceship, yeah, it's good. <laughs> so how many people wanted to be on a spaceship when they were young? <laughs> and how many wanted to be a rocket scientist? <laughs> <laughs> the birthday <they> girl. <laughs> well, spaceships are very interesting. It takes a lot of it takes a lot of effort to be on a spaceship, and in fact, it takes a lot of schooling and a lot of astronauts as well. <laughs> or so I'm told. I've never been on a spaceship, uh, but I understand they go through a lot of big, rigorous training in order to do that. Um, I think they have to go into anti-gravity sorts of uh, kind of tubes and practice amongst uh, a lot of different methods in order to uh, custom <laughs> in terms of uh, you know custom rating themselves <laughs> to the whole gravity and the situation that they're going to be in when they're in space. Um, it's very dark and it's cold, so uh, they have to wear a lot of spacesuits uh, when, when these astronauts are in space. Uh, and the spaceships themselves have to be equipped in order to make the astronauts safe um, and also uh, you know, be able to handle the amount of time that they're going to be in there. So the spacesuits are, are incredibly uh, interesting and very important uh, to, in terms of how we're going to progress in life. They not only show us, help us get into space so we can explore that area and know what's happening uh, in terms of the planets and the stars and, and where things are growing, um, but uh, it gives us a relative alternative to what's happening in the ocean here in Hawaii, for example. Um, because if you look in the ocean, you're going inside the earth and inside the planet and seeing what's there. Um, like the team in Minnesota that went to snorkeling. Um, but then, you know, if we really want to understand what happens inside the Earth, on land in the Earth, we really need to understand relatively what that means in the overall scheme of things, and spaceships help us get there. You know, spaceships help us explore those galaxies uh, far, far away. <laughs> and that brings me to something really interesting, because my favorite show when I was young was Star Trek. And Star Trek, really, I, I really thought that the next generation was much better. <laughs> <laughs> and for this reason, I mean, 
what was his name? Captain Picard, you know, he was really, I think, the essence um, of morality, uh, you know, that, that we really practice here in Chihuahua <laughs> as well. Um, and really, it's all about the spaceship that he had. <laughs> At the end, he had all the technology on the spaceship. I mean, even his right arm, Data, you know, Data was a computer that was on the spaceship helping to run the whole thing. He had a whole engineering room. And I think, you know, if I look back on it, the spaceship really, without the spaceship, Captain Picard would be done. <laughs> Wait, do you agree? Yeah, yes! <laughs> Their favorite person was on, on Star Trek? <laughs> Tupac. 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 I don't think Tupac was on Star Trek. But I do, I do think he was a singer of some sort. Uh, some remote areas of southwestern Virginia. <laughs> but, you know, just getting back to the topic of spaceships, and I know it's very interesting to all of you. Um, <laughs> I'm just wondering what your favorite part of the spaceship really is. <laughs> state park. Sorry. A state park. A state park. A state park. Oh, the escape pod. Oh, very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> the escape pod. Um, did you have a favorite portion of the escape pod? <laughs> <laughs> the bathroom. You know, escape pods actually remind me of the magicians and when they have escape pods through, you know, their tricks that they do. You know, when, they're, when magicians are actually in, uh, like if you're in one of these tanks and the magician goes in and you think they're chained up and they need to get out, um, I think they also have es escape pods. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a whole field of study, I think, associated with escape pods. I just really don't know if it's real. <laughs> the most interesting part of the spaceship. <laughs> and I think for homework tonight, we should all go look at really the contents of what makes up the spaceship, how that then relates um, in terms of the relative importance of, of what we're experiencing here in our shell and Wanam, and the depth of what we have in the ocean and the earth, as well as the sky, um, to really understand how all of this... Into your speech, you'll be very successful. What? So try to put that into your speech afterward. Any any questions? Well, now we carry on. Any volunteer for the next week? Yeah. yeah. Any topic? Jonathan, suggest a topic. Uh, computer programming. Programming, computer programming, yeah. It doesn't matter whether she knows, she may be an expert, huh? but say, you don't know about computer programming, you still can speak. Well on it, that shows that you are good than mine. Yeah? You should find out. Computer programming. <laughs> I find computer programming a very interesting topic. I don't really know. I'm not an expert on computer programming. But from what I understand, um, computer programming allows you to create something new and to create an experience for people that they might not have experienced before. So I like storytelling more than computer programming, so I related a little bit to that. So how do you, out of a bunch of things that are unrelated and um, disconnected at that moment, can you create a story and engage and inspire people to something new? I don't know if any of you are computer programmers or experts, here? No one? <laughs> <laughs> Have you? Ali, <laughs> any storytellers? <laughs> any people who enjoy story, listening to stories? Yes. That was definitely one of my favorite activities since I was small. Since I was really small, um, in my family there was a tradition of storytelling. I had the blessing to meet my great grandmother, and she always told us this story about a little. Um, she was called the Good Witch, that had a broom, and she flew all over the country, 
all over the world discovering treasures and adventure. And I think this story that my grandmother told me is what led me to travel the world and to look for something beyond what I believed or beyond what I was told in my immediate reality. And I think these stories are what led me to these wonderful arts, that led me to these wonderful training, that led me to go beyond what I thought was possible. And this is why, even though I'm not an expert in computer programming, I'm very inspired how these live storytelling can put things that are different and inspire us to look beyond what we know. Thank you. You can have to find out whether she's a computer expert or not. We know that she's an expert in Zen. <laughs> Now, so far we have quite a lot of lovely uh, women. Now we want to have some men. <laughs> Any men, volunteer? Obey? Anybody can suggest the topic? Anybody? Something different? Yeah. Tropical plants. <laughs> <laughs> Tropical plants. Now, did you know that? Uh, recent statistics uh, that was published um, on the internet and on national TV lately actually showed that 70% of people, when they hear about tropical plants, actually think of uh, factories that happen to be in the tropics. <laughs> I was quite surprised when I first heard about it. <laughs> so I did a bit more research about what happens here. Like, has anyone heard about that? <laughs> you did, right? Yeah, you see that on TV? It's everywhere. It's everywhere. <laughs> they went over the world by storm. So I did a bit more research on what's going on with this. And uh, it actually turns out that it's a disease. A disease uh, are spreading these days because of uh, the over amount of information that we are subjected every day with the internet, with TV, with all the, the waves like in the air, and people get really confused. And so we were talk just talking about spaceships before, and then another form of confusion uh, that happened with spaceships, for, especially with young children. Uh, has anyone got like young children that you know are on the iPad all the time? Or have seen, have you seen that? Yeah. Yes, yes you have. And yeah, you have to. And one thing that's happened with young children when they hear about spaceships now, they actually think of the animal in space, the ship, the spaceship. <laughs> space. Now that's a problem I had, but for a difference, just because being French, I don't make the difference between sheep, the animal, and sheep. <laughs> so in my case, it's not a disease. It's because of language, but but I heard that that's something that's happened very, uh, very commonly. Uh, so, coming back to the fascinating subject of tropical plants, <laughs> was, oh, Anthony has just left. Uh, I hope you found it interesting, like this very unknown fact. Like I didn't know about it, but about uh, this misinterpretation <coughs> of the term tropical plants. And I hope it help to shed some light so that we avoid misunderstandings in the future. Thank you for your time. <laughs> <laughs>
after the course, I actually signed up for some surf lessons. Um, but before that, I felt like I wasn't completely comfortable with my swimming, so I took some swim lessons so I'd be safer in the ocean. So uh, if anybody out there doesn't quite feel too comfortable with swimming, you can take lessons or you can put on a life jacket too. <laughs> Not a very stylish way to surf. <laughs> but it'll still save your life. <laughs> um, yeah. Fortunately, I've uh, read, read the, the surf lesson page on the internet. Um, <laughs> they, do, they do your lessons in two parts. So they do, they do dry land lessons where you practice without with the surfboard on the ground. You learn how to pop up, you learn how to stand. I would think you learn how to paddle up as well. <laughs> After that, the, uh, you have an instructor that takes you out in the ocean. Um, you're also CPR lifeguard certified too, so um, if you forgot your life jacket that day, <laughs> you're a good at it. I also find that a lot of people that surf describe a very zen experience as well. I feel like we're the activity is so immersive and it causes you to focus so much that it kind of almost puts you mechanically into Zen as well. So I'm uh, really looking forward to applying my Zen practice, my surfing as well. So thank you for having me. Uh, surf safe. <laughs>so you can see the value of Zen. Not only in public speaking, not only in the speech of a dinner talk. One of this skill, you can use of many, many mundane things. Now one more man, any man, or let the ladies choose. Which man do you want to speak? Ladies, choose. Which man do you want to speak? Ladies, choose. Any ladies? I choose Herschel. Oh, all right. <laughs> Any, any ladies want to give a, a topic? I'm Maybe. the most serious guy in the place. How am I going to make a joke? <laughs> Dragons. Ooh. A topic from you? She calls us the dragons. Huh? Dragons. Okay. Okay, dragons. Uh, who here, when they were a child, ever saw a dragon? <laughs> In real life. <laughs> when you saw the dragon, what color was it? Silver. Yeah. It was silver. Well, that's important. Your, your dragon? Green. Your dragon was green. Was this when you were a child or when you were drinking something last night? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was, I was on a helicopter ride. And they, there was one of the mountains on close to Hanalei Bay yes. that uh, the, the, the people that didn't live on the island didn't come near the island because it was told that this was a sleeping dragon. And from afar, ah. it did look like a sleeping dragon. So nobody ever came on that side of the island. Well, you see, that's my whole point exactly. I'm, I'm so <laughs> glad we're not <laughs> The importance of a dragon, especially in the Hawaiian culture, is that the dragon is known as a guardian, a guardian of a certain realm, which is similar to British dragons, which uh, are symbolic and hang around castles. And uh, there's even uh, a national patron dragon of, uh, of uh, Great Britain. His name is Harvey. <laughs> St. Harvey. <laughs> but uh, going back to the significance of the colors of the dragons, not only are they designated as guardians and symbolic for magic, but the color is important. Uh, you said you saw uh, a silver dragon? In Japan, uh, of course you'll have to correct me if I'm, if I'm mistaken. When I was five, I was fascinated with the Japanese culture and I thought that the Japanese culture, and the dragons are distinct from, from the British. Of course, I, I was probably correct in this point because the picture books showed that. And 
most of all, the silver dragons are guardians. Well, that special show, that special, special show that everyone loves in every language and every culture broke that mold for me. And I'm angry to this day. And then that is uh, Barney, Barney. <laughs> <laughs> a warrior dragon is supposed to be red, silver, gold. Barney was purple. <laughs> this caused a great uh, anxiety in me as a child. <laughs> um, my lesson, if, if you take anything away from this dragon speech today, it's this. Don't be like me and hate purple dinosaurs <laughs> that you think are dragons. So the speech is full of fun and love.